So let's see how to show a splash screen in your app in Noah while performing some tasks in the background. So in our previous YouTube tutorial, we created this app that uses ChatGPT API to be an assistant that can help you in something specific. So you can pass a custom prompt and this app can be specialized in helping any specific topic. I only want to add splash screen to this app. So the first step is you actually need to create a new screen and I want to call it splash screen. Now here will be the name of the screen itself and here will be the name of the file that it will be created. Now the name of the screen is also the name of the class in the code that it will be created. So this is a splash screen. Now we have it and it's okay to spend some time on the splash screen. So please make it beautiful because it's a first impression that you will give to your users. Well, I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. I'm going to make it quick, but for you, please don't do that. Spend your time and make a really good one. And you can actually make a really good one. So now there's two styles of the splash screen. You can actually just um, have a background color specific, and then you can drop widgets like text and draw and write something or uh, drop an image or an animation but the other style if you want to have a background color which is the most common one i mean a background image like this here like this screen and to do that you need to add a wrapper to the screen itself and you need to add the container wrapper now why is that because the container wrapper contains the property of the image so when you click on plus here you will create the image object and here you can have an online image or you can actually have an image that you already uploaded to your assets. Now, I already uploaded one, so I'm going to pick it, but I cannot see it here. Why? Because here, the color of the screen covering the container. So to modify that, you need to just decrease the opacity for the, uh, uh, the screen color to 0%. But also you can do something else. As Photoshop, you can have a little touch. So if you increase the opacity a little bit, for example, you can have like a red touch on the image, maybe a green touch on the image. I'm going to actually prefer maybe a pink one a little bit. So it's sort of like if you go for 100%, it covers completely the image. If you go to zero, you use the image fully. I'm going to keep it maybe 20 to 23. And then I want to add maybe a Lottie animation. I'm going to now keep it default. You can actually try to find a one in this case. And I, of course, I want to add a text widget, call it my amazing AI assistant. And I cannot see it now because it's uh, need to change the color. So I'm going to pick a white background. Let's make it 40. Oh my, that's a lot. 35 size. Also, let's make the height auto the width auto so uh, it's actually you don't need to keep resizing the the box and also I need to actually change the font so let me pick a fancy font mm, not a fancy one but wait I can pick this one okay not bad I might actually I want to make it shorter my amazing guys okay that's that's enough I would say you can maybe actually uh, align the text in the middle for example and you also can add a loading indicator here and you can even make the background color white but um, usually in splash screens you don't do that in case you want to you're able to and now the f you need also to make the splash screen to be your home screen so when you press on play the this screen it will be the one that starts Actually, I want to remove the loading indicator. I don't like it. So select it and then click delete. Okay, so now we have the splash screen. Amazing. But now it will not go to the second one. So you need to add some logic to actually make it try like try, uh, go like navigate to another screen you have in your app. So to do that, select the screen and then open the screen in circuit. So this is the logical the logic editor that we have that you can modify all the logic on that screen. Now, on the left side, it's empty because it was a new screen, so there was no variable, no parameter, no function, and no events. 
Now, the events is added when you add like a button. So the button comes with its own event. The function you want, you create, and the params and the variables are, um, I mean, the ones exactly that you can create here. Anyway, now the functions, I need to add a new function and I need to add to override an existing function. So here, if you choose add function, you will create a one from scratch. But every screen in Flutter comes already with uh, also two uh, default functions, which is initial state and dispose. Initial state is get called when the um, screen uh, loads in the beginning. And that's what I actually need. So if you click on it, you can now override that function. If you click on it now, you will see this graph. And in Flutter, usually, you need to call super as a first statement to initialize the full screen. So anything you do, do it after uh, call super. So here I can do something simple. So I can, um, I can like write create, or I can simply just click on plus and go to general and click on create. And I can create an object from the type timer. So this is literally just a timer. This will take the time that you include here. And after the time is done, it will literally just call the function inside. So this is what I'm going to use now to make a very simple splash screen that only uh, waits a little bit until you see, or until it navigates to the other screen. Now, later, I will make it more advanced and I will do some actions like loading data during the splash screen. But now I'm just going to show you the basic way or the simple way to do it. So I'm going to set two seconds as the duration and inside the timer i will open the function inside and choose navigate or the navigator function which allows me to navigate to another screen i will then use the uh, to go to the login screen let's say or let's actually say the main screen okay and here is the types so push will add the screen on the top of the stack but the problem here, if you click back, you will go back to the previous screen. But in splash screens, you don't want this. You want that when the user go to the main screen or the login screen, there will be there should not be a back button to go back. Even if the user clicked back on their phone, they should not be able to do that. So this is why you choose push replacement. Push replacement replaces the existing route, which is the screen, with the new one that you're going to navigate to. So I'm going to push replacement to the main screen. So now the main screen will replace the splash screen. So the user will not be able to go back to the splash screen. And that's it. So if you click on play, you wait two seconds, then it will go automatically to the home screen. Now we can also customize the animation, but this will come on another tutorial of how to customize the navigation animation. Okay, great. So this is a basic way to do it, but mainly you need to actually do some loading, some actions while the splash screen is appearing. So it's not only because it looks pretty, you only also need to do some, you know, some, some action during that. So what I will assume now is that you have an API and with the login, which is the login screen here, if the user logged in correctly, you can store the token for the user in the shared preference of the app, which means like you store the token in the local uh, storage. And then when the user opens the app again, you want to see if they have the token. If they have the token, means that you don't want them to log in again every single time. You can simply get them directly to the home screen. If they don't have the token, means that they log in for the first time or they, ne they actually logged out from the app, then you take them to the login screen. And then if they have the token and you talk them to the main screen, you can use the token to load uh, the user profile and those data. So I'm not going to dive into all the details of it, but I'm going to dive into this section in the splash screen. So if you go back again to the splash screen, I want to delete the uh, timer function. And I can add all the logic here, but this will be a little bit mess. So I want to a little bit organize my, my work. So I will create a new function called load data. And I will call this function here. So after calling the super, I will call load data. So now after, like it just 
instead of writing all the logic here, I'm going to just pack it in a, in, a, in a package which called the load data function. So in the load data function now, I need to check if the user have the authentication token. So in under shared preferences, you will find the node which called get. You can use this node to get the token with a specific key from the local storage of the user. And let's say, let's assume I call the authentication token auth token. So I will try to get this token and then I want to see if it's null or if it's not null. And depending on that, I can decide to which screen I need to navigate the user. So I need equality node, the equal, so I can compare the authentication token and by default it will add null. So here I'm actually generating a boolean, okay, which is the condition to check is the authentication token exists or not. And because I'm using a condition, I use if statement. So if I connect the if statement here and I connect the equal to the condition here, now I have this statement which will check if the user have the token. Now, then will be executed if the token is null. So if the token is null, which means the user doesn't have the token, I want to navigate the user to the login screen. But I need to also, um, like now when this logic has, when, while this logic is happening, the splash screen is appearing anyway. But this all logic can happen in like under a second. So anyway, you need to add a timer still to wait a little bit uh, until the user see the splash screen before you, you get the user to another screen. So anyway, with the then, I will actually create a timer, okay? And I would say this time I'm gonna wait for one second and 500 millisecond, which means like 1.5 seconds. And then after that, in the callback, I will get the user to go to, I'm going to write navigate and push replacement to go to the login screen. Okay. And I will do the same here. So I'm going to create an object that I don't find on the menu. And this object is timer, which comes inside flutter. I will also set the same thing, which is one second, 500 millisecond. And in the callback, I will then navigate to the main screen this time. And I will use push replacement. So what happens now? So what happens now is this. When the function load data is called, it will check if the authentication token key exists in the shared preference, which is the local storage. And if it's null, it will wait 1.5 second and then it will go to the login screen because the user doesn't have the token now if the user had the token this condition will be false so else here will be called and the splash screen will be appearing for another uh, one second and the half and then the app will go to the to the main screen so let's actually test this so if you click on play we wait 1.5 seconds and it went to the home screen this time. Okay, let's see why, because it's either I, mi I mixed them, because now it should be null. Okay, this is because when I was testing before, I actually uh, created the authentication token. So I'm gonna actually clear it up. That's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna clear the, uh, I'm gonna just call it this function just for testing. And when I click on play, it cleared the token. And when it cleared the token, now I have it clear. So now it went to the login screen. Now I just want to remove this one because I just use it. Because if you click on the play here and you actually save the uh, the token, it will be saved in the project. Because the project here also, like this previewer, has its own storage. So if you use the uh, if you use this method, which called set, and you already set a token you still will find it here. So if you wanted to remove it, you need to use a clear, uh, the clear node, which you'll find it here. So now I cleared this storage. So now there is no token.
token already saved. So if I click on play, if I wait a little bit, it will go to the login screen because there's no token. Now, let's say you did write the email, the password, and you logged in successfully, and then you stored a token. So there is a token. So I can actually just, for testing, I will actually set a random token, and I will call it, I mean, it should be the same one that you're checking for in the function load data, and I will just put a random token. And I'm gonna actually just for testing, I will call this RL, like before calling the function. So now for testing only, I'm actually setting a token, and inside load data, I will check the token. And because I'm setting the token now, it will find, this one will not be null, it will actually return the actual token. So the navigation will actually work that the user will go to the main screen, not the login screen. So if we press on play and you wait a little bit, you go to the main screen. So when the loading on this logic is executing, the splash screen already displaying, but we're using again the duration here and the timer to add a little bit more time because this thing can end in less than a second for sure. So you want to add a little bit more time to the splash screen. So let's say, let's say this took one second and this took 1.5 seconds. So in total, the splash will be appearing for 2.5 seconds before you go to the other screen. Now, what you need to do usually is that when the user go to the home screen, you use a token to load the user data. And when the user go to the login screen, after they log in, you actually store the token in the shaperef. Now, those details, we will actually cover them in upcoming tutorial about how to build a full to-do app using API. So we're going to cover all those scenarios. But here, I just did the setting for the token just for test, uh, for testing for the, uh, for the function I have here, which is the load data. Amazing. Now, if you have any question, please let us know. Feel free also to go to our community, which is community.noah.dev. You can post there the questions you have, and we will try to help you as fast as possible. Thank you so much for that, and let's go build something big.